Well, hello there, friends and family. Good to see you tonight. I'm sorry for the mask. We have something serious to talk about. And what I want to talk to you all about tonight is a novel coronavirus. And the fact that as of today, it is spreading across the United States of America. So let me take this mask off and let's chat about this a while and the seriousness of what is happening and unfolding across the globe. So y'all, why is this so important to tonight that, you know, I had the mask on and all that. Well, what we're talking about is a novel coronavirus. And why is that significant? Well, that's the same type of virus as the SARS virus that came out in 2002. That uh, had 8,000 reported cases and over 800 confirmed deaths. It's also the same as the MERS virus, also a coronavirus that came out in 2012. Now it had less reported cases, somewhere around 3,000, but the mortality rate was much higher for the mortality being deaths of 858 people. And even with the H1N1 virus, which was an influenza virus that broke out in 2009, which report, reportedly by the CDC caused 248,000 deaths, all of these three viruses, at no point in time did any country initiate a full lockdown quarantine. Except here it is today, the 24th of January, and China has done just that. Not only in Wuhan, where the coronavirus outbreak started, that being ground zero, supposedly, at a fish market. And what the Chinese government is saying is it initiated from either snakes or bats that were being sold there for human consumption. But there's another report out there that in Wuhan is also one of the Chinese government's largest laboratories for developing and studying viruses. And what has come out has been that there's a possibility that this new 2019 coronavirus could have possibly leaked out from that laboratory installation. Now, what's so important? And is that true? Well, I don't know. But this is one thing I know. Like I said, no time during the SARS outbreak, the MERS virus outbreak, or even the H1N1 influenza outbreak, did China or any other country initiate a full lockdown? Nothing in no one in and nothing in no one out of the cities. And as of tonight, not only Wuhan, but 11 other surrounding cities with reportedly over 30 million people or in full lockdown quarantine. Another significant thing to understand is the first reported case was back in mid-December in Wuhan. And this is just January the 24th. And China has already initiated a lockdown quarantine to stop the spread of this virus. That's unprecedented in modern history or in any history, of virus containment to date. So that makes me wonder here again, what China's not telling us. As of today, there are over 800 confirmed cases and now 26 confirmed deaths. And we're gonna go on the computer here in a minute 
and we're going to go over the latest statistics in real time of how this coronavirus is spreading. Because now it's in neighboring countries. It's also two cases as of today have been reported in France. And as you may or may not know, we had our first case in Seattle, Washington back last Tuesday. A young man. And if you watch some of the video footage coming out on social media, as well as some news outlets, I want you to watch closely what they're wearing when they're treating this young man. Initially, they were wearing full biological hazmat suits with full face respirators. But now, they're treating this patient in Seattle, Washington with a robot remotely. Now, I'm going to tell you folks, that's as serious as it gets and that makes me question what our U.S. government isn't telling us. Why take these extreme measures? If it's that contagious and possibly that deadly to warrant using a robot to treat the patient, what's going on? And friends and family, that's what we're going to be looking into. Now one thing I want to talk to you about too. At the first video you saw me wearing that dust mask. And I've got it right here. And that's just all this is. It's a dust and particulate mask. And it's not an N95. It's not a surgical mask. But that being said, it doesn't matter. In the case of viruses and other biological variants, this mask doesn't feel seal to my face airtight. A surgical mask doesn't seal to your face airtight. Doesn't matter whether it's N95 or not. And what I'm trying to say is, is the mask that you've got and you're wearing it does not seal airtight to your face then in keeping a viral contaminant or a biological contaminant out of you it's not going to happen and anybody who's worn a surgical mask or worn a dust mask knows they leak and the harder you respirate the more they leak so think about that. Now, I don't care who's telling you different. These type of masks are virtually worthless. Are they better than nothing? Maybe so. But if a surgical mask was adequate, ask yourself why not only the doctors and nurses in China, which are also suited up in full biological containment suits, and respirators as well as those in Seattle were why aren't they just wearing a surgical mask let's head on into the computer and take a look at this new coronavirus and what's currently happening with it globally so come on in with me well all we're now at the computer and what I'd like to do right now is start off here with uh, this article from Science News, how the new coronavirus stacks up against SARS and the MERS virus. For the third time since around 2003, a coronavirus has jumped from animals to people. The coronavirus, one of a variety of vi viruses that causes colds, has been making people cough and sneeze seemingly forever. But occasionally, a new version infects people and causes serious illness and death. This is happening now with the coronavirus that has killed at least 26 people and sickened at least 900 since it emerged in central China in December. And that was December the 15th. The World Health Organization is monitoring the virus spread to see whether it will turn into a global public health emergency. Among the ill are two people in the United States who contracted the virus during travels in China. 
A Chicago woman in her 60s is the second U.S. case of the new coronavirus. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed January the 24th in a news conference. Officials are currently monitoring 63 people across 22 states for signs of pneumonia-like disease, including fever, cough, and other respiratory symptoms. Of those people, 11 have tested negative for the virus. Two, including the newest case, and another patient in Seattle tested positive, the CDC reported. France reported two cases on January the 24th as well, the first in Europe. Much still remains unknown about the new coronavirus, which for now is being called the 2019 Nobel Coronavirus or 2019 NCOV. Lessons learned from previous coronavirus outbreaks, including severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS, and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS, may help health officials head off some of the more serious consequences from this virus outbreak. Then it goes into what are coronaviruses, and I'm not going to go all into all of that. But I will leave a link to this and all websites that I use during the course of the production of this video. But I do want to get down here to this portion. How dangerous is a coronavirus infection? Usually a coronavirus illness are fairly mild, affecting just the upper airway. But the new virus, as well as both SARS and MERS, are different. Those three types of beta coronaviruses can latch on to proteins studying the outside of lung cells and penetrate much deeper into the airway than cold causing coronaviruses, says Anthony Fauci, director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infection Diseases in Bethesda, Maryland. The 2019 version is a disease that causes more lung disease than sniffles, Fauci says. Damage to the lungs can make viruses deadly. In 2003 and 2004, SARS killed nearly 10% of the 8,096 people in 29 countries who fell ill, according to the World Health Organization. MERS is even more deadly, claiming about 30% of the people it infects. Unlike SARS, outbreaks of that virus are still simmering, Fauci says. Since 2012, MERS has caused 2,494 confirmed cases in 27 countries and killed 858 people. MERS can spread from person to person, and some super spreaders have passed the virus on to many others. Most famously, 186 people contracted MERS after one businessman unwittingly brought the virus to South Korea in 2015 and spread it to others. Another super spreader who caught MERS from the man passed the virus to 82 people over just two days while being treated in a hospital emergency room. And that's what I want to stress right now to all of you, friends and family. Just what one person can do. And now we have two cases in America. It can infect a large portion of people rapidly. Right now the 2019 NCOV appears to be less virulent with about a 4% mortality rate. But that number is still a moving target as more cases are diagnosed, Fossey says. As of January the 23rd, the new coronavirus has infected more than 581 people, with about a quarter of those becoming seriously ill, according to the WHO. By January the 24th, the number of reported infections had risen to at least 900. That's how fast this is spreading. An analyst of the illness in the first 41 pa patients diagnosed with the 2019 NCOV from Wuhan, China, suggests that the virus acts similarly to SARS and MERS. Like the other two, the 2019 NCOV causes pneumonia. 
And folks, that's what you die from. You're not dying from the virus. You're dying from the consequences. And that's pneumonia. But unlike those viruses, the new one rarely produces runny noses or intestinal symptoms. Researchers report January 24th in The Lancet. Most of the people affected in the first group were healthy, but fewer than a third having chronic medical conditions that could make them more vulnerable to infection. That's how fast this virus is moving. And here in a moment, I'm going to take you to a real-time map that's going to show you just how fast this is spreading globally. But here it says, how contagious are coronaviruses? Well, it depends on the coronavirus, but neither SARS nor MERS have been able to sustain human-to-human -human transmission the way influenza viruses can. Fossil says that's because the viruses have fully adapted to infect humans. And maybe they never will, he says. Still, this is a family of viruses that was formerly just a common cold, he says. But now, in the last 18 years, we've had three examples of it jumping species and causing serious disease in humans. In Wuhan, the new coronavirus has been able to transmit down a chain of up to four people, health officials said. Five members of the family from Shenzhen, China, caught the virus when they visited infected relatives in Wuhan. Researchers report January 24th in the Lancet, travelers also carried the virus from China to at least seven other countries, including the United States. No human-to-human -human transmission has yet been reported outside of China, the World Health Organization said. All the deaths have also been in that country. Epidemiologists are frantically calculating how infectious the new virus is. Estimates for the infectivity of a new virus range from the World Health Organization estimate of 1.4 to 2.5 to a much bigger 3.6 to 4.0 calculations. From Jonathan Reed of Lancaster University in England and colleagues. Reed's group estimates that only about 5.1% of cases in Wuhan have been identified. Now think about that, folks. Only about 5.1% of cases in Wuhan have been identified. And what they go on to say, that's probably not because the Chinese government is covering up how bad the outbreak is. Many people have had only mild symptoms or none at all. Those people probably wouldn't go to the doctor and get tested for the virus. Now we're going to just drop down here to what treatments are available. For now, all doctors can do is treat the symptoms of the new disease. Researchers have also developed some experimental treatments based on SARS and MERS, including antibodies that may help combat infections. Getting samples of the new virus may allow researchers to develop monoclonal antibodies in the lab where scientists may be able to take immune B cells from people who already have recovered from the virus to produce antibodies to help other infected people. Some antiviral medications have shown promise in treating MERS and are being tested for their effectiveness against the 2019 NCOV virus. Experimental vaccines, Fossey wrote, including some based on RNA, are also in the works. So, y'all, I want to show you this map right here. This is the Metobiota website. And what this map is, is it tracks epidemics across the globe. And I have the map filter set right now for all pathogens. And that makes it real interesting. Like if you hover over the United States, you can see epidemics currently being tracked of 21. If you click on the little orange ball right here, it says new data available. You just click on it. And here again, it's showing the 2019 Novel Coronavirus, 2019 NCOV. First known case was 115-2020. Latest known case was 124-2020. 
two reported cases. Pathogen sentiment, high. But <clears throat> every place there's an orange dot, new data available. Now that just might be on a certain outbreak in that country and not necessarily the 2019 Nobel coronavirus. But what you can do is come over here through the map filters, select the 2019 Nobel coronavirus, and right now it's showing just where the coronavirus is at as of the 22nd of January. Now I'm not sure when this map will be updated. They do have a paid version. This is a free version. And the paid version, I think, updates daily. I think this version updates weekly. But it's still a tool that can, you can use at your home to keep an eye on the spread of this coronavirus. And as you can see here in China, first known case of the Corona Nobel virus was on December the 12th, 2019. Last known case was January the 24th. 882 reported cases. Total reported deaths, 25. Now something I'd like to say right now, as I am sitting here trying to research this, drop things into a video so I can inform you best I can, this virus is spreading faster than what I can complete a video. And what I mean by that, over here it shows two known cases. But as of right now, reported this morning, and this is Saturday, January the 25th, we have two more suspected cases in America. One is a college student, Texas A&M, located at College Station, Texas which is suspected of having the coronavirus and has been placed in quarantine, awaiting confirmation. A second suspected case of the coronavirus is in Los Angeles, California, where a passenger was taken off a of flight at the Los Angeles LAX airport. So now we have possibly four cases of the coronavirus. We have two confirmed and two waiting to be confirmed. But I thought this map could be used to track the spread of the outbreak as it continues to spread across the globe. And like I say, this information right here was from January the 22nd. It does not show the three cases now. As of Saturday, this Saturday morning, there are three known cases in France. Yesterday, there was just two. As of this morning, there's also a reported case, the first, in Australia. So now we're over here at the New York Times. And this is a live site. And it was just updated six minutes ago this Saturday morning. Coronavirus live updates. Xi Jinping warns China faces grave situation. The authorities reported 15 new deaths in Wuhan, including a medical professional in his 60s. Right now, the city of Beijing announced it would restrict travel, including suspending domestic and overseas group tours. Here's what you need to know. Xi Jinping, China's leader, says the nation will beat the epidemic. 15 more deaths are reported, including a medical specialist. U.S., and this is important, U.S. ordered the evacuation of American consulate employees. China's capital moves to restrict travel, including tours abroad. Hong Kong declares state of emergency and shuts schools. People without symptoms could be spreading the virus, and that's just something that came out late last night and early this morning. Scientists studying this virus have found that there's an incubation period of up to five days. But unlike other viruses, such as the flu, where you must be symptomatic 
to be contagious with this virus, you do not. And what that means is there's a high possibility that during the five days prior to showing symptoms, people can be spreading the virus and not even know it. Or we do not have any way of detecting it. Because right now, the only thing we're using to screen people with coming into the country is whether they have a fever or not. And that's the important part here. They were infected five days prior to showing symptoms. China, as of Friday, was only building one hospital with a thousand beds. As of this morning, six minutes ago, China is building two hospitals to fight the outbreak. The first projection completion time is 10 days in the second and 15 days. But here's something I want you to look at right here, this picture. And this is what I'm saying about the N95 masks, the surgical masks, the dust masks. You see how these health professional, professionals are all suited up in biological hazmat suits? You see they have not only respirators on, but they have eyewear on as well, goggles to protect their eyes. Now that's what I'm telling you. You have to watch how the health professionals are treating this and what precautions they're taking to know what you should be taking. They're not walking around in surgical masks. This is what it looks like in China where they're treating it right now. And the same is true in Seattle, Washington, and they've even taken it a step further and went to using a remote controlled robot to treat the young man that's in the Tacoma hospital. So when you're making your decision on how you should prepare and what you should have, Remember this picture, because I'm going to show you more. In a sign of how the spread of the coronavirus has deeply shaken China, the nation's top leader, Xi Jinping, convened a meeting of the Communist Party leadership on Saturday to begin an offensive to staunch the spread of the outbreak, improve treatment of victims, and spread supplies to areas under lockdown. We're sure to be able to win in this battle to beat the epidemic through prevention and control. According to an official summary delivered on Chinese television. Until now, Mr. Zai has said little publicity about the growing crisis, even as confirmed cases of infection with new and little understood coronavirus multiplied over the past week. In Wuhan, the city in central China, where the virus first spread, and nearby areas came under a net of travel restrictions intended to contain the outbreak. Mr. Z issued brief orders about emerging epidemic five days ago. Now, though, he has ordered mobilization across the country and drastic measures to hold back the virus, which is linked to pneumonia symptoms that can be deadly. And you can go on to read this article, and I will also include it in the description below the video as I will all the sites that you are seeing. So if you'd like to do more in-depth review yourself, you can do that. But let's switch over here to another one that I briefly want to show, show you. Now, we're at a website, CNN Health. And the reason I wanted to bring you over to this particular article, this was as of Friday, January the 24th, is for some more visual reinforcement of what I'm trying to tell you about how you should prepare for yourself and your family. And as the article is headlined, a man diagnosed with Wuhan coronavirus near Seattle is being treated largely by a robot. Not by people, folks. By a robot now. The first person diagnosed with the Wuhan coronavirus in the United States has been treated by a few medical workers and a robot. And down here is a picture. You can see here again. 
full biological containment suit, full face shield. Down here, this is how the young man arrived at the hospital. He arrived at the hospital in a special isolated gurney called an isopod and has been treated in a two-bed isolated area away from busy sections of the hospital, the doctor said. This is serious. This is not something we've done in the past. I think we are all aware of that. You did not see these type of measures being taken for the SARS or the MERS outbreak. There's something different about this coronavirus. Right here is a picture of the robot. Now we're over on an article of Los Angeles Times. Should you panic about the coronavirus from China? Here's what the experts say. It's a virus scientists have never seen before. Health officials don't know exactly where it came from, but it has traveled more than 7,000 miles since it was discovered last month in central China. New, new infections are confirmed every day despite an unprecedented quarantine. The death toll is rising too. If there was a Hollywood movie, now would be the time to panic in real life. However, all that most Americans need to do is wash their hands and proceed with their usual weekend plans. Now folks, we've got people treating these people, health professionals, in full biological and biological hazmat suits with full face protection and respirators. And what they're telling us is just wash our hands. Like we're trying to prevent the cold and the standard flu. That's just crazy in my mind. Now over here you can see as of the 22nd they showed 554 cases. Then on the 23rd, there were 644 with 18 deaths. As of yesterday, Friday, the 24th, there was 1,354 cases and 41 deaths. This is from John Hopkins University here in the United States. And I don't want anybody to panic, and that's what they're saying here. Don't panic unless you're paid to panic, said Brandon Brown an epidemiologist at the UC Riverside who has studied many deadly outbreaks. Public health workers should be on the lookout. The government should be ready to provide resources. Transmit and timely facts to the public is key, Brown said, but for everyone else, breathe. And I, here again, I can't stress it, don't panic. I just want you to know where this virus is at what it's currently doing and what I feel that I and my family and my friends need to be doing to keep from contracting this virus. So more than three weeks into the outbreak that has spread to at least 1,354 people in 11 countries and territories, scientists have learned some important things about the virus. And they go on to say it's a coronavirus, which makes it a relative of the pathogens that cause severe acute respiratory syndrome, which was SARS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which was MERS. Those diseases have sickened thousands of people around the world and caused hundreds of deaths. Other coronaviruses result in nothing worse than the common cold. In addition to humans, coronaviruses can sicken cows, pigs, cats, chickens, camels, bats, and other animals. Most of the outbreak's early victims said they had visited a large seafood and live animal market in the Chinese megacity of Wuhan, suggesting that the virus originated in another species before jumping to humans. When experts examined the organism's genetic code, they found a sequence that was entirely new to science. That means many people have not had the chance to develop sufficient natural immunity to the coronavirus that has been dubbed NCOV-2019, an important consideration since vaccines take years to develop. Now I want to stop right here. Scientists haven't seen this before. 
It's entirely new to science. Well, that means it's different from SARS and MERS, folks. You know, I'm not a rocket scientist. They've looked at the genetic code, and they found a sequence that was entirely new to science. Well, SARS isn't new. MERS isn't either. Right here, they're saying, and this is not the only article that says it's entirely new. I know it's definitely moving like nothing we've seen in modern history. Fortunately, the virus seems to cause only minor symptoms such as fever, difficulty with breathing, and people who are young and healthy. But here's the troubling part for people like me. I'll soon be 64, and I know most of my viewers are in the age category of 45 to 65 and older. So listen to this part closely. Most of the 41 deaths tied to the coronavirus to date have been in people who were at least 50 years old with underlying medical problems or weakened immune systems, Chinese officials said. Well, folks, we all know, those of us who are older, our immune systems aren't what they used to be in our younger days. That's just a fact of getting older. All the deaths so far have been in people of at least 50 years of age or older. Keep that in mind. We don't have evidence yet to suggest that this is any more virulent than the flu you see in the U.S. each year, said Dr. Michael Mina, an epidemiology researcher at Harvard's T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Most people, the proper medical attention will do just fine. In fact, it's possible that hundreds or even thousands of people in China and elsewhere have been infected but have had such mild reactions that no one even noticed. Well, to me, that just isn't a comforting thought. That just means it could be twice as bad, ten times as bad, or a hundred times. But like they say here, it's too soon to know. Often in new outbreaks, the most serious or severe cases are recognized first, and that may result in a skewed picture of just how dangerous the virus truly is. Well, that's what I said. See, we just don't know. Epidemiologists are also trying to nail down when the new virus gained the ability to jump from human to human. More than 85% of the patients identified in the past week said they had not visited the Wuhan market that is believed to be the ground zero for the outbreak. Well, apparently it is jumping from human to human now, which puts this virus at a phase four threat level. There's only six phases, by the way. And there's a phase five, which is really bad. It is clear the growing outbreak is no longer due to ongoing exposures at the Hunan seafood market. Patients in the Guangdong province have spread the virus to family members who have not traveled to Wuhan, which is about 600 miles away. The World Health Organization also reports few cases of hospital employees and other health care workers becoming sick after treating infected patients. And here again, deaths are now confirmed at 41. Confirmed cases, 1,315, which is lower than what they stated previously in the article. But as reported Friday, there were two cases in France. As reported this morning, Saturday, there are now three. Of course, the epicenter is in China. There's cases in Thailand, Singapore, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, Vietnam, of course, the United States. And now we know as of this morning, one case in Australia. Public health officials said they expect to see human-to-human -human transmission continue in the short term. That means new cases are sure to emerge throughout Asia and even the United States. Information is spreading faster than the pathogen, and that's just as novel. The 2003 SARS outbreak that began in China, Guangdong province in 2002, sickened 8,098 people and killed 774. 29 countries by the time it ended in 2003. 
But in the outbreaks early days, the Chinese government obfuscated the number of cases, hindering foreign leaders' efforts to help citizens' ability to protect themselves. The resulting public backlash prompted the dismissal of the country's health minister and mayor of Beijing. This time around, Chinese officials have moved swiftly to alert other countries to the outbreak's development. They've also shared the virus's genetic sequence, which can help epidemiologists track its spread and make predictions about what it might do next. This is definitely not 2003, said Rebecca Cates, the director of the Center for Global Health Science and Security at Georgetown University. The speed with which this virus was identified is testament to that. Within 24 hours of receiving the coronavirus genome, the CDC programmed a real-time diagnostic test called an RT-PCR assay, said Dr. Nancy Mezzernener, director of the agency's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases. The tool quickly confirmed that a man in Washington State and a woman in Chicago were infected with the NCOV-2019 coronavirus and not some other pneumonia-causing virus. Other institutions around the world have used the genetic code to design similar tests. That leads to another reason to avoid alarm. The rapidly rising case counts may be deceiving you. Before these new tools were developed, doctors had no surefire way to confirm a case of 2019 and COVID. That means that as testing becomes available, infections appear to skyrocket. Now we just went over. We're on another article. They were saying, that they suspected that the vast majority of cases had went undetected. Now here we are with the Los Angeles Times telling us that that may not be the case. It's the only reason we're seeing a spike now is because we're now able to test for it. Until they have a better count of the number of people infected, experts can't calculate the coronavirus death rate. And since viruses are capable of mutating quickly, much of the information scientists have gathered may only be temporarily accurate. In any evolving outbreak, you need to make response decisions with imperfect information, Kate said. Mina said he has the absolute faith in the CDC's ability to stay on top of the situation. The health agency alerted doctors in early January to be on the lookout for patients who might have the virus. And last week, it began screening passengers at U.S. airports that received flights from Wuhan. Now, therein lies another problem I have with all this. The CDC alerted doctors in early January. This did not break news-wise till Monday, really, of this week. Why wasn't the public alerted to this? when they alerted doctors. But the CDC isn't running the show, and questions still abound about global preparedness. On Thursday, the World Health Organization officials said the outbreak did not rise to the level of a global health emergency, but that it may yet become one. Dr. Gwen Yi is almost certain that it will. Yi, an infection disease expert, at the University of Hong Kong told reporters that even the drastic quarantine measures affecting 36 million people in and around Wuhan won't be enough to keep the coronavirus from spreading because the Chinese government acted too late. He also said he visited markets in Wuhan after the outbreak began and was dismayed by the lack of hygiene he observed there. Though he has put his expertise to use to fight the SARS and several influenza outbreaks involving Nobel strains from birds and pigs, this is the first time he has felt hopeless, he said. And you'll have to pardon me, folks. My voice is rather raspy this morning. And I'm going on little to no sleep. I've been tracking this virus since Tuesday the 22nd. I have a lot of hours into it. So hopefully you'll bear with me. Indeed, Mina said, some pathogens prove to outsmart even the world's best public health agencies. And when they never been seen before, they have a competitive advantage. And here again, they're saying they have never seen this before. But as I reported earlier in this video, it was supposedly a coronavirus very much like coronaviruses such as the SARS and MERS coronaviruses. 
now, on Friday the 24th, they're saying they have never seen this before. This is brand new to scientists. Now that's alarming. At least it is to me. And I hope it is to all of my family, friends, and those of you who follow this channel. Because they've never seen it before, we have no defense in our immune systems, nor do we have a vaccine or any way of stopping the spread of this virus and its death toll. Now I'd like to bring you over here to this YouTube video, which I'll provide a link to it. Now I can't play it during my video or I'll get a copyright strike. But I do encourage you to watch this video. This man right here is a PhD from Duke University. And he explains why the coronavirus is worse than you've been told. And he is a scientist and a PhD. I can't stress enough that I think all of us should watch this video. I have another video I'd like to bring up too that also goes into great detail. Here is the second YouTube video that I'm recommending. Coronavirus, China puts millions in lockdown amid rising deaths. Now I'd suggest, I would suggest you watch the entire video, but if you want to jump to the important part about what scientists and epidemiologists are concerned about, why they're concerned, why they're worried, and then jump forward here in the video to 10 minutes and 42 seconds and watch and listen from there where doctors and health professionals explain the virus and explain their concerns. Both of these videos I think are extremely important to you understanding the nature of this virus and the severity of it. Now what I'd like to talk about is how I'm going to prepare how I suggest my family prepare, friends, and those of you who follow my channel. Okay, folks. One thing I want to go over right now is mask. That's the first thing I want to discuss. And what you see here, and this is from Business Insider, wearing a mask isn't particularly helpful, Toner said. And what he says here, many people in China have lined up to purchase face masks which have reportedly started to sell out some stores. And I will tell you right now, even on Amazon, masks and full face respirators are selling out. Many are out of stock right now. There's little harm in it, Toner said, but wearing masks, except in the situation of a healthcare provider, has never been shown to be a very effective way to protect yourself from infectious diseases. Now understand, I've already told you that healthcare professionals, one has already died. Many others have already contracted the 2019 NCOV coronavirus. They know how to fit their masks. And therein lies the problem with these masks. At best, even if they're fitted properly to your face, they still do not create an airtight seal. They leak and that's just some total of it. They leak. They are better than nothing. But herein, if you're wanting to protect yourself from such things as a viral outbreak, a biological outbreak, these are just for looks. So bear that in mind. When you're looking to buy something to protect yourself and your family. I have personal experience with this from an episode in my life back in 1989 where during a very strange accident I became exposed to a virus and it was a virus that attacked your autoimmune system, therefore stripping yourself of the ability to fight bacteriological 
and virological infections. In other words, my body had no immune defenses. And in the course of the many months that followed, those who treated me, they didn't have masks on folks. They had full biological hazmat suits and respirators. In the very least, they were full face to everything from self-contained respiratory units. Here again, I can't stress it enough. I know money might be an issue, but in dealing with something as serious as protecting your family against a viral outbreak, what could be the pandemic that even Hollywood hasn't dreamed of making a movie about, these are little but nothing. So now, with that said, let's go over and talk about what we can do and what we should be doing to protect ourselves, our family, and our loved ones from this new coronavirus. So, I'm going to use this as a fitting backdrop to our discussion on just what can we do to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. And this is actually a picture of a scene with Matt Damien from the movie Contagion. I think that's quite appropriate to what we're about to discuss. Now the first thing that I want to say is what you can do and how long you have to do it depends on where you live currently. If you are currently living in a city or large metropolitan area, you have higher chance of becoming infected by this coronavirus. Should you be so unlucky as to be currently living in one of the U.S. cities that now has a reported case confirmed of the coronavirus, your time to react and strengthen your preparations may be coming close to an end. And I urge you, if you are living say, let's say, Los Angeles, where there's been one confirmed case. At some point in time, should this spread and more cases develop, L.A. will face a lockdown quarantine, just like Wunan in China. Homeland Security has the authority to put that in place. So how many cases will it take for a full lockdown quarantine to be imposed on a city in the United States of America? Is that five cases, 10 cases, 20? Is it gonna take one death, two, four, or more? What I'm trying to say is, if you're living in a city like LA with a population of four million, LA County has a population of 10 million. This one person, there's no telling how many people he is already infected prior to him going to the hospital and being placed into quarantine. That all depends on the mode of transportation he used. Did he drive his car to the airport? Did he take public transportation? Did he go shopping? Eat in a restaurant? All these factors will depend on how many other people he came in contact with before he went to that hospital. Was that five more people? Ten? Fifty? A hundred? Who knows? So I can't urge you enough. If you are living in the L.A. area, your time is rapidly running out. And here again, Chicago, another huge metropolitan area, already has a confirmed case of the coronavirus. There again as well, your time to make preparations to safeguard yourself and your family is rapidly running out. As in China, they were given no advance warning, none at all. 
of a complete lockdown quarantine put in place. And even now, as of Saturday the 25th, reports are coming out of China, where Hunan, all the stores are out of food, they're running desperately short on medical supplies. China has asked for international donation of medical supplies. There are many videos out there right now showing the streets of Hunan are totally void of any people whatsoever. There's no people out on the streets. There are no cars on the highways. People have all retreated to the safety of their homes. Hunan and the other now 13 cities surrounding it look like complete ghost cities, void of all human life. Think about that. Now that being said, here again, if you're in a city right now that has confirmed cases, you need to act immediately. If you are in a large metropolitan area or city, you may still have time. What you have to understand is, does your city have an airport that services China? In other words, does it have flights to and from China? Because if it does, and I'll say here in the southeast, that would be Atlanta. Atlanta has one of the country's largest airports and it definitely does service China. Now as of yet Atlanta has no reported cases from the end COVID-19 coronavirus. Any day now it could. Now I lived in Atlanta for several years and I'm telling you this and this is what I would tell you. If you are able to leave a city. That would be a decision I would be thinking about as soon as the first case confirmed of coronavirus came out. In fact, I would most likely pack up everything I had and I would leave. Now for those of us in smaller towns, more rural areas of the country, we have a longer period of time to prepare to get our preps in place. And what kind of preps am I talking about? One of which is hopefully all of you, because you do follow my channel, you have a well-stocked pantry, or at least you started building one, and you do have food storage in place. Because should this become a pandemic, and you have to shelter inside, which is what I would recommend, then you're gonna need that food. Also, you're gonna need that water, as well as medicines, disinfectants. So, depending on where you live, that's the first consideration you must make. If you already live in a location that has a confirmed case, you may have little to no time left. But if you're living in a large city with no confirmed cases, but with air services at your local airports that service China, it could be any day now before a confirmed case is in your city. So that being said, what can we do? Well, the first thing you want to do, should there be confirmed cases and confirmed deaths, you're going to want to immediately limit your exposure to other people. In other words, you're going to need to stay at the house. That's going to require adequate food, water, and supplies to do so. Just doing that, staying home, will be your number one safeguard contracting this virus. Here again though, depending on the length and severity of the outbreak, we'll determine on how much food, water, medicines, 
such that you will need. For those of us who live in more rural areas, like myself, that will not be so much of a drastic, immediate thing that we need to consider. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be preparing. We should also make sure our food stocks are adequate. I would say for at least three to six months, if not a year. If that, you don't have that on hand right now, well, I'm sorry. It may be too late for some of you. No, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not wanting you to panic. So the first thing, if you've got your food in place, if you've got your water in place, you've got your medicine and other supplies, and that being a way to provide heat and power, because during a pandemic outbreak, absenteeism at critical infrastructure could become an issue. If this gets to the point, which has been studied before in a pandemic situation where as high as 40% of people could be absent from work. That being the case in power stations, dams and what have you, there is a possibility there could be power outages. There could be other services that are no longer available, such as supplying fuel, and food to your city or your local area. But the first thing, if you've got your food and your water, medicines, a way to provide heat and power, I would definitely be ordering a full face mask respirator. And it should be made of silicone. If it's not fully made of silicone material, at least the seal that seals to your face should be. And it should be rated as antivirus. And let's take a look at what some of those look like right now. And what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a full face mask, these are pictures of what I'm talking about. Now some of these are for dust, dust, particulate, and whatever just pictures of what they look like. If you are lucky enough to have a military grade gas mask, that's more than adequate. But if not, then you need to look into acquiring a full face respirator. One that is rated for antiviral. This is not a time to be cheap. Now, this will only be needed should you be required or have the need to leave your home. If you have everything in place where you can shelter in place for the period of time necessary for the pandemic to run through its course, then you don't need one. But if you do have to venture out and encounter people, large numbers of people, say shopping, big box stores, grocery stores, train stations, bus stations, airports, then you may want to consider something of this nature. And I'm going to tell you why the full face is so important. These coronaviruses enter your body primarily through your lungs and infect you via the lungs mucous membranes. However, that being said, and that's why I showed you the pictures of how people were in the health professions that were treating these patients were dressing, they have either goggles or full face masks. Because folks, around your eyes, there are also mucous membranes. And a virus can and will enter your body the mucous membranes surrounding your eyes. And that's why they wear what they wear. They don't tell you that. That has bothered me ever since my own personal experience with a virus back some odd 30 years ago. 
So bear all of that in mind. If you're wanting to protect your family and your loved ones, get the full face out of silicone material, which will seal against your skin and give you the most protection. Something I want to say about N95 masks right now, if you don't know what 95, N95 means, that means even if it were to seal airtight, it's only capable of keeping out 95% of contagions. 5% will get through the filter media of the mask. You want to bet your life on it? You want to bet your child's life? Your wife's? Husband's? I don't. And I've already ordered three more full face masks that are already on their way to my location to support what I already have in place. <coughs> so sheltering in place, limiting your exposure to people is the number one thing you can do. And as health professionals are saying right now, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds. But I would recommend 45. And here's the reason why for that. Coronaviruses can stay alive on surfaces for up to five to eight days. So let me put that in perspective. You're at your workplace. Somebody's infected. They cough and say they don't get it on you. But it's deposited on surfaces. You come along and touch them. You touch your face or some other portion of your body. Viruses just don't sit there, folks. If you look at them under the microscope, they are moving. They will not only move, they will find a way to enter your body. Hence again why health professionals are in full biological hazmat suits. They don't want to get it on any part of their body. To put it in a more common term, viruses have legs. They can move. And they will find a way to enter your body. Hence, hazmat suits, hence full face shields, and hence the respirators. Health professionals aren't taking any chances. And what I'm recommending to you is you don't take any chances either. So, think about everything I've shown you and discussed with you in this video. Think about what you have on hand. Can you shelter in place? Or will you have to go out into the public? Should this become a full-blown pandemic? And understand this, for those of us that are older, age 50 and above, every death so far has been for people 50 years or older. That's why I'm so concerned. I'm in that category. And I know many of you are. So y'all, I know it's been a really long video, but I wanted to inform you the best I could. Wanted to let you know the facts as we know them right now from January the 25th. I'm hoping and praying this does not go into a full-blown pandemic. But many scientists, as well as the government knows, we are long overdue for something of this nature. The worst in modern history was the Spanish flu. To give you some perspective, that killed over 500,000 people in America back in 1910. 
it infected over 5 million. And that was a flu. This, something scientists have never seen before. So already 1,354 cases affecting 11 countries. And just since the 15th of January, it's spreading fast. And it's not acting like any of the coronaviruses that came before it. So y'all, I don't know what more to say. I will include a link to all the video, all the websites in this video that were used in the making of it. I especially urge you to watch the two YouTube videos that I recommended. I think those are just excellent and letting you know just how scientists and health professionals feel about this virus and its severity, unlike our news media. By all means, use this video as you choose to, to protect yourself, your family, and your loved ones. And like always, folks, I truly do wish that all of you will take care Stay safe out there. And may God bless us all. But I don't want you just to put your faith totally in God. God gave us the means and the ability to help ourselves. And before we ask Him to save us, I truly think we should do everything in our power to save ourselves. So with that said and all, I'll be seeing you on the next video. Goodbye for now.